Hello, this is Eva Henry. Welcome to Anointed Nations. My guest today is Pastor Martin Powell from England. And I had been to England for 13 months. The Lord gave me this song while I was there I'd like to share. I had seen a lion roaring and fire coming out of its mouth as it was digging and clawing and rooting, uh, digging up and rooting out everything that was in the way of revival in England. And that was a vision I received around the same time as the Lord gave me this song. You're our God, and we run to you. And we run to you. And you give us eyes to see and you give us ears to hear and you give us hearts that break for the lost both far and near yes lord give us eyes to see give us ears to hear give us hearts that break for the lost both far and near.
Well, England, we declare and we decree that you will rise up like a lion in the fires of revival. Jesus is alive. Do you have any thoughts on that, Pastor Martin? Well, yes, I find it quite interesting because when we had Brexit uh, recently in England, left Europe, the Lord said to my wife, Janet, that now is the time for England to rise up like a lion and roar. Wow. And uh, we're looking for the gospel to come back out of England and around the world. Amen. Amen. Um, Janet is a wonderful woman of God, and I definitely uh, um, am happy to hear that she received that. And um, would you like to uh, pray anything over England yourself? Well, Father you know how much England did for the gospel, sending out the missionaries. Lord, we want to see that again. We want to see England at the forefront of, of your kingdom, that bringing evangelism around the world, seeing children get saved, seeing nations get saved. Lord. So Lord, I pray you would raise up England, all of middle England that's have got all the seeds of the gospel inside them, Lord those seeds would grow Lord and I ask for a great move of your Holy Spirit in England in the name of Jesus Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. and you have uh, won many awards in England for your music Yes, that's right. And when, when I was very young, I said to my mother, I said, Mum, I'd like to play the French horn. And she said, No, God has told me you are playing the clarinet. And so that's what I did. I played the clarinet. And uh, the Lord just kept blessing me all the time. I won all the local competitions and prizes in Nottingham where I grew up. And I, on my piano at home, there's lots of silver cups. Then I went to the Royal Academy of Music. And <coughs> straight away, I was winning prizes there. Um, prizes, the Solomon Prize was the best woodwind brass player in the, in, in the Academy. I won that. And then when I left the Academy, I went and studied with a professor at the Paris Conservatoire. And uh, I won international prizes as well. Wow, which prizes did you win? Uh, w one was a clarinet prize, uh, and that was, um, it was under 23 year old. And, uh, I, I won a prize there. And then I won um, a Christian music prize as well. And, uh, I just, I, my mother <coughs> used to say, Martin, don't ever think that you're doing that. You know, it's, uh, and so. Your mother used to say, Martin, don't ever think that you're doing Yes, because the Holy Spirit has come down on the audiences, in, in, in classical audiences. And uh, you know Salzburg, you know, where the sound of music... Oh, yes. Yeah, I played in the, in the square there with a whole symphony orchestra wow. um, accompanying me. <coughs> and the Mozart there, the Mozart clarinet concerto. I have been to Austria, but not that exact area of Austria. Yeah. And when I play, <coughs> I look out at the audience and sometimes you can just see the Holy Spirit just settling on people and you yeah. can see whole rows of people crying. So w when my mother said, don't ever think you're the one doing that, I used to say to her, yes, but I'm doing all the practice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to practice until I bled. Oh, really? And I used to practice <coughs> that between 6 and 12 hours a day. And, you uh, practice between six and twelve hours a day. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And you, you know, it was a lot of work. So God was doing it, but you co-labored with Him, like the Bible says, we're co-laborers with God. Yeah, absolutely. Having talent is not enough. You have to practice, and that's what I was saying about practicing listening to God. And I go a little bit further. 
Hear I say, Holy Spirit, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear, give me a nose to smell, mm. give me a tongue to taste, and give me fingers to feel. And I like practicing the different senses that God has given our spirit. Yes, yes. Because when the Lord got me to lay the clarinet down, I put the time into reading the Bible. So I started reading the Bible where I was... Um, Instead Practice. of practicing the yeah. clarinet, you spent that time reading the Bible. Yeah, hours and hours and hours. I've, I've read the Bible over a hundred times. You know, I've gone one period of time. I, I read the King James Bible in seven days. I read the New NIV in eight days. I read the Amplified in 14 days. I read the New King James in eight days. I read the Revised Standard Version. All went through most of the English versions. Wow. And I just absolutely adore and love the word. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Not just hearing, but hearing and hearing. Yes, when, when I started my business, Kingdom Talents, in uh, Fort Mill, the Lord told me I had to stop reading the Bible so much. And so I had to go down to reading it once a month. And uh, I remember saying to Rick Joyner, about it and he said Martin you're the only person I know who God's ever said that they should read the Bible less <laughs> <laughs> but I just love it and, he, and I would get up at 4 o'clock 5 o'clock and read the Bible but um, I've settled into a, a, um, a pattern now because I've had to read it less I, I read the New Testament uh, every month and I read the Psalms Proverbs Minor Prophets every month Job, Ecclesiastes, Son of Songs every two months, and the rest I, I read every three months. That's my, my program. Oh, wonderful. And when did you accept the Lord? How old were you? Um, I was 20 years old. Well, I think I was a, a prodigal son. So I grew up in the Catholic Church and then left the Lord when I was 11. And in fact, what happened to me is that the Lord... Uh, when I was 20 years old, he appeared to me in a dream. And he said to me, Martin, this is your last chance. Wow. So you have to make a decision right now to work for me or to work for my enemy. Which will you do? So I said I would work for him. And uh, never worked for any, uh, you know, anybody since. That's sobering, though, isn't it? To have that type of communication from the Lord, that this is your last chance. And many people think that they can wait to the end of their life and give their lives to the Lord. But I was not given that luxury. I was told at 20, this is it. And many people don't realize it's their last chance when it is. Yeah. You never know when you can die or you know, the decisions you make to work for the enemy. I think because the Lord wanted to use me, he knew that I had to use in one kingdom or the other. And that was my choice, he said. And I'm so glad. I got yes, right. yes. Amen, amen. Mm. And you've helped uh, so many people to understand uh, the kingdom and the financial realm in the kingdom and how to look at money in a covenantal way, I guess is the way I would uh, phrase it. How, how would you advise, how would you advise people on how, how to keep money from having them or how to keep from just working and serving money instead of money serving them well, well um, I guess we will do uh, the next show um, and I'll see you next week on anointed nations Thank you for being on the show, Martin. You're welcome. I guess we'll have to actually cut.